So I've had my Tesla 2021 Model Y performance for just over two years now. Do I still love it? Let's check it out. Now Tesla Fi. So if you haven't yet, check out my year one video review over here probably. Uh, a lot of those things that I loved about my Tesla still hold true today. The sound system, the speed, the charging network. I'm gonna cover some of that today, but definitely uh, a lot of those things still hold true even after two years of ownership. And in fact, it's a little over two years. But first thing I wanna do is I wanna take you guys through the exterior of the car and a little bit of the interior and see what kind of shape it's looking like just after two years. So overall, the exterior is in pretty good shape. Now, I do have PPF, and I do have it only on the front, however. So I've got the front bumper, the hood, and the side mirror. That's the only place I have PPF, and that's worked out pretty well for me. I do have a, pretty, a few small dings that I was saved from, from PPF, and I'll uh, point those out here. There's just a couple of things here, and sometimes they uh, are more apparent near the edges. You can see here some micro scratches near the handles and then I got a little rock chip on the exterior um, about a year ago. We can take a look at the wheels here. A bit of curb rash, unfortunately, of course that is driver error, um, but there is some things that you can do to prevent that, mitigate that, and even fix them. Hopefully we'll have a video about that soon. Driver's side, uh, again, looks pretty good. Now, I washed it today and it washed out pretty good, but um, there's still some dirt and we can see here where some of that dirt collects, especially even after you drive and where you might get some drips. So the rear is the worst case for that, but um, on the whole, it cleans up nicely and you really can only tell if you get really close to it. Now, I did have the rear bumper replaced from an accident, so that's a pretty brand new spot. Here's a few more micro scratches that you can see again in direct sunlight. And uh, overall though, the exterior is in pretty good shape and cleans up quite nicely. Now let's have a look at the interior. I do obviously have the white interior and we're gonna take a close look at that. I do have aftermarket floor mats, which look atrocious even after they are cleaned while they prevent the dirt from getting on the carpet below. The mats I particularly chose are not great. As we see, there can be some smudges and things from kids hanging on the seats, but that's easily cleaned up with a white cloth, which I did here. Just a little bit of water on a microfiber cleans up well. I also encourage everybody to get a matte screen protector. It reduces glare and fingerprints and is easily the first thing you should get. And of course, get yourself a unit in R7 because you will be going fast. Here's some wear and tear from kids getting in and out of the car. I did also clean up the seat for this side, um, but left the other one uh, pretty dirty as we're gonna take a look here. One of the biggest issues is that dirt collects in those crevices, and that's the most evident part of having a white interior, if you happen to have kids especially. But uh, nothing, a bit of vacuum, and again, a microfiber will take care of. I did notice this today, hadn't noticed it before, the seatbelt seems to make a mark on the white as well. Now taking a look at the rear trunk, again, the mat I have here looks pretty dirty, but again, that saved me quite a bit. And if we lift up, we got pretty much a brand new interior. So while the mat looks dirty, it turns out quite nice. So there's the wear and tear tour. I went back and forth about how much I should clean up the car, but ultimately wanted to provide you a sense of daily use. It does clean up well, but yes, like any other car, it does take some effort. Trickier in a daily driver with a wife and kids who honestly just don't share the same perception of value as me. I mean, try that with kids. Anyway, I also wanted to share some updates on some very basics that you might be concerned with. After exactly 28 months, I have 30,264 miles on the car. I'm on software version 2023.27.6, which is on the full self-driving beta track, which is uh, different from the public releases. And my FSD version is 11.4.7.2. I know it's a bit of a mouthful, but I just want to kind of lay that basics out there. As for charging, let's have a look. 
An average month for my family driving around town here in Wenatchee, I pay just $5 a month to charge at home. The Tesla app also provides charging stats. Here, the report for my last 31 days, which included two out of town trips at about a 260 mile average round trip. So here's my last full year, which was totally out of the ordinary for us as it included my 2,500 mile road trip to Tesla Takeover in San Luis Obispo, California. And just for some cost comparison, here's what a single round trip flight ticket would cost me from Wenatchee. Times that by four and you can see how quickly driving paid off. And again, this is a full year including the round trip. Before I go into the good, bad, and ugly over the last two years, be sure to use my referral link below to buy your Tesla. While the offer changes quite a bit, as of October 2023, you can get $250 off plus three months of full self-driving for free. I'll get some points to use on the Tesla shop, which would be awesome. And I've never had anyone use my referral link yet, so you could be the very first, which would be a very humbling way to thank me and of course save yourself some cash. And if you're watching this a year from now, you never know, maybe you'll save you a thousand dollars. So definitely check it out below. And I'm a hundred percent convinced that you will love your Tesla as much as I do. So there's a bit of a spoiler. Now let's check out the good, the bad, and the ugly of owning a Tesla Model Y performance after 28 months. All right, let's talk about the good things about owning a Tesla two years in. And of course, the first thing is superchargers. It is a game changer and it destroys every fear, uncertainty, and doubt about charging that the media is going to shove down your throat. I made a 2,700 mile road trip down to Southern California and back. I never had to wait. I spent between five to 30 minutes depending on my next leg charging and routing was near flawless. It immediately took me to my next charging spot. I was there for the determined amount of time and I discovered some incredible places like this one in Harrisburg. They're timed out perfectly and I really enjoy them and it is definitely one of the best reasons for owning a Tesla. I'm gonna say it again and again and again. It just is one of the best things. And on top of that, I am still able to use nearly every other EV charging service with uh, either an adapter and the one that came with mine is the J1172. So not only do I have superchargers, but I have those as well. I love my white interior and it is easy, easy to clean uh, and even with kids as we saw it, I enjoy it and I think it's uh, one of the things that helps me feel like my car is quite luxurious. It feels great to sit on as well. Very comfortable. And like my iPhone or any other device, you get software updates on a regular basis. A lot of times we get new features, we get UI adjustments and other awesome quality of life improvements. I love the updates that come and especially we've always had fun with the holiday update which hopefully is coming soon for 2023. I can't wait to see what we get in that update. And finally, in the good category is maintenance. Aside from my religious car washing, which is probably the most time consuming, I've had one cabin filter replacement. I've re replaced my wiper fluid. I've had my tires inflated a few times. And of course, uh, my seasonal wheel swaps for winter tires. Now, let's jump into the bad. I'm not going to dwell on this one too much. It is the only one I have on the list for bad and it is still an issue it is simply the paint. As we saw, the paint is soft, it scratches easily, and you basically need PPF. So much so that, interestingly, Tesla is going to start offering full PPF starting in California. So instead of fixing the paint issue, they're deciding to cover it up, literally. So that's my thoughts on that. Now let's get to the ugly. Maybe some of the things are a little bit in between. I've had 11 service center visits and unfortunately they're far away from me. I've had a couple of mobile service visits which have been great except they just take too long to get to me. Um, my FSD is the main reason why I've had to had some service visits. It makes it a challenge especially when FSD is not working at all and I have to drive those 200 miles without using even cruise control because it relies on the camera system. So I've had some hardware issues there as well. Other visits related to a passenger door that was stuck, 
Another one had uh, a steering wheel defect. I had a bubble in the leather that is being replaced. And I had a rear spoiler replacement, but that was when I first got it. Other things that are ugly, I've had my windshield replaced twice, one due to a stress fracture, and another one due to a paint or a rock chip. Now let's talk a little bit about FSD because it is one of my favorite things about owning a Tesla. And it's also one of the more frustrating things about owning a Tesla. I love it. I wouldn't live without it. I use it more often than not. And I've enjoyed immensely being a part of seeing it progress. That said, it is not full self-driving yet. Hopefully that's coming sooner rather than later. And I think probably the thing that makes FSD the most frustrating is just simply the lack of transparency about what's happening with development or anything else. We get hardly any information. We do get the notes that come along with each release. And sometimes they're quite difficult to decipher and we rely on the community to kind of help us to say, hey, this is what this is fixing and what it's addressing. Other than that, uh, I'm not gonna say too much more about it because it really could end up being a whole episode, but it's kind of like a love and not hate, but again, frustrating perhaps. Ugly is like the best word. So it's good and ugly at the same time, right? Those things can exist. So finally, the big question, would I buy a Tesla again? And the answer is unequivocally, absolutely, without a doubt. I can't imagine owning any other car, let alone EV right now. Again, supercharging is the one of the biggest things, um, but the ease of owning a Tesla and the routing and some of the things that come along with it, it's just a phenomenal car and there's such a joy to drive. Definitely recommend it for anyone. So now is a good time to get a Tesla as well. Uh, literally in any trim, you're going to absolutely love it. And the future of Teslas uh, is fantastic. I'm super stoked about what is coming, especially from the full self-driving perspective as well. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Of course, like, comment, and subscribe if you found this at all useful and helpful. And if you have any questions, leave those down in the comments below. I will definitely reply to you. Thanks so much. Peace.